everybody, it is Lon Seibin, and I am back today with the Fujifilm SL1000. And if there is only one reason to consider this camera, it is this. It is this enormous zoom lens that this thing has. Uh, it is a 1200 millimeter equivalent uh, if this same kind of zoom was on a 35 millimeter camera. And uh, for anyone that does photography like I do, you know that getting that kind of telephoto capability is quite expensive. Now, the camera is not going to give you the image quality that a $15,000 lens might be able to give you. Uh, but it's going to do really well, especially in instances where you want to take some video from a long distance or something like that. Uh, this thing can do really, really well. So let's take a quick look, though, uh, at the hardware and see what makes this thing tick. And uh, here it is. It's, uh, it's a pretty basic uh, camera. It's uh, about the size of an entry-level SLR from Canon or Nikon. So it's not, uh, uh, it's not small, but it's also not very heavy. It's made out of uh, some pretty lightweight plastic, so it's not going to do well in weather. Uh, one odd thing on here is that this it's got this grip here on the lens, but it doesn't do anything. It just doesn't turn. It doesn't move. It's just there just kind of for, for comfort, I guess. So normally you would expect that to move the zoom in, in or out or something like that. Uh, on the front, of course, you have the lens, and you have two ways to control the zoom. You can control it here, um, or you can control it uh, up here. So you have two different ways to get at it, depending on how you have the camera oriented. Um, I didn't like, like the lens cap all that much. Um, it's, you know, it's a separate lens cap, which is fine, but um, it doesn't, yeah, it grips on okay, but it can pop off pretty easily. And it ships without the lens cover on. So it, when you pull it out of the box, the lens is exposed. Now, granted, it's wrapped up and it's uh, pretty well protected in the box, but nevertheless, that was a bit of an issue. Uh, it does have a built-in flash. I don't shoot that much with flash anymore, but um, it's there if you need it. It has a stereo microphone on the top, so it'll pick up uh, the left and the right, as any good stereo microphone should. On the top here, you have a dial which selects all the different modes, and we're not going to get into that in this video, but uh, I'll show you that in another one uh, just so you can see how that uh, ends up working there. And you have um, some exposure settings. These buttons do different things. To, well, this button here does different things depending on uh, what mode you're in. It does have a rapid fire mode, which I'll show you in a minute. So you can fire off shots for like sports and that kind of thing. The sharpness on the camera isn't all that great, so you're not going to do pretty well with that. Um, it has a viewfinder. Now, this is not a through the lens viewfinder. It is a little video monitor in there. And you'll see when my finger gets close to the uh, to the top, to the little sensor here, it'll switch over to that internal viewfinder. And, and, it, and it gets tripped up very easily. As you can see, I just put my hand in front of it, not that far away, and it gets kind of confused. So there is a button uh, that's right next to it here where you can uh, push the button and lock it into one or the other. So that's a little bit helpful there. Um, next to that, you have a record button. So you can immediately do video without having to switch into a video mode to do that. And I like that a lot. So whenever you see something you want to take a video of versus a picture, you just hit the button and it will start recording. Your Playback button is down here. Uh, you have your um, selection uh, dial here. And what's neat about this is that it is a dial. It's a little sensitive, so uh, you can sometimes push it in without um, even knowing that you did it. But uh, you can select different options that you might use uh, for the camera in here. Another neat feature is that the screen will swivel, so you can hold the camera in a variety of positions and actually see what you're shooting. And that's pretty helpful, too. So this image of the moon best exemplifies just how awesome the zoom is on this camera. It is incredible. Um, I shot this out during the super moon of 2013 here in June. Uh, this is off my back porch, handheld no less, uh, and it's uh, pretty, pretty impressive. Now, if you zoom in, of course, it's not incredibly sharp, so you're not going to get the kind of image quality you'll get out of a $15,000 lens. But again, this is not a $15,000 camera. It's under $400. So pretty amazing uh, zoom for this thing. It is just incredible. Where it really shines, uh, the zoom, is in the video mode. And as you can see here, it, uh, it just keeps going and going and going. And you can go from seeing no detail at all at that mailbox and that tree to getting all the way in close. I should add that the, uh, the video format is a little flaky. I had some problems with Final Cut Pro working with it. So you might have to do some additional conversion if you want to edit with it before you bring it into Final Cut. And that was kind of an annoying thing. Uh, also, the images are, um, when you shoot in RAW mode like I like to do, uh, the RAW mode is not yet compatible with Apple's Aperture uh, yet or any of the Apple stuff. It will work in Photoshop on the Mac and Windows, but we may have to wait for Apple to come up with a uh, camera RAW update for that. But uh, pretty impressive, though, as far as the, uh, the zoom quality goes. Um, the, uh, when you're outside with it, you know, don't forget that when you're zooming in with a 1200 millimeter equivalent lens, 
uh, every camera movement gets amplified. And as you saw in that video, it was getting kind of shaky as I moved in. So the camera does do a nice job of image stabilization, but uh, you may want to learn how to set the shutter speed higher like I did here so that when you get in close on the bird, you can uh, keep the image from getting too blurry. And I, what I did here is I kind of maybe overcompensated, but I went uh, to a 1700 shutter speed. And there's a mode on the camera. Uh, if you go to um, the S mode here, uh, you can set the shutter speed to whatever you want, and it will uh, try to keep the camera um, aperture and ISO settings to match what your desired shutter speed is. And it does okay at doing that. The problem is, is that when you do set the shutter rate that high, it tends to uh, up the ISO, which makes the image a little less uh, crisp and, and clear, and it introduces a little bit more noise. But uh, you can really start tweaking it, though, in the manual mode and try to find something that uh, that works for you. Here's some more images I took uh, from a parked car and as you can see it's a little noisy. This is at ISO 1600 and I should add that ISO uh, is the sensitivity of the sensor. So you can set the, the sensor to be uh, uh, you know, relatively low sensitivity which gives you a better image quality but uh, you lose the ability to um, work well in low light and the, the higher you go on the ISO the better the shutter speed you can get but the image quality degrades. Now on really expensive cameras uh, they're getting better and better at that high ISO so uh, these, these guys aren't up to that par yet, but nevertheless, this is a consumer grade camera that uh, doesn't cost literally an arm and a leg. So uh, just bear that in mind when you're doing that. Here's some more images here, again, from, uh, from a parked car. Now this is the camera in its, uh, in its lowest ISO. I put it in auto mode and out in a nice sunny day. And you can see you get uh, a nice degree of sharpness here in the images, and I'm pretty, yeah, pretty happy with it. It's, uh, it's a good digital camera. It's 16 megapixels, so the, uh, the raw f files are almost uh, 25 megabytes, but uh, the JPEG files I'm finding are uh, about 6 megs a piece, so you'll want to make sure you get some uh, good-sized memory cards to accommodate that. Low light indoors is okay. This is a uh, 1600 ISO file again, and I was just going off of whatever the lamp was putting out. And you can see you get a lot of noise here, and you don't see this on uh, the more expensive SLRs, but still for this grade camera, I'm, I'm not unhappy with it. It's pretty, uh, it's pretty decent uh, in that regard. Now the one thing you'll see here, here's another example. This is at a higher ISO. This is 6400 ISO, and you can see around my daughter's face, it's a little blocky and stuff, but uh, again, this is, this is not what you would get out of a camera at this price range even two or three years ago. So uh, I am, again, not unhappy with it. When it's in auto mode, it'll try to do its best to figure out what's going on. And, you know, in this case, my daughter was moving her arms as she always does. And it was a little tough to keep, keep up with her. And you can see that uh, it'll suffer a little bit. So you want to learn at, you know, how some of, those, uh, some of those advanced functions might work in the camera. So let's take a look at those advanced functions now. All right, I'm just going to show you a couple of the more notable features that I found on the camera. The first is a panorama mode. So this will work a lot like how you might expect your smartphone to take a panorama where uh, you hold down the shutter button here uh, and then you move the, uh, the camera along this yellow line here and it'll build a panoramic image for you. Uh, after you're done shooting and uh, it wants you to go all the way through. It builds a pretty big panoramic image. So that's that's kind of neat. Now on the top here, and this might be useful in a sporting uh, event also, is you have a uh, rapid fire mode. So you can hit that here and we can go dial up like H, which is continuous, and you can just take a lot of shots and it'll keep going until it fills up its buffer. So I think it does like, you know, 10 or eight or nine or 10 shots and then it fills it up. And that's actually pretty good for a camera in this class. Um, it'll dump it, individual files out. In fact, it's uh, writing to the card uh, while it's ready to go for the next uh, shot there. So that's pretty helpful. Uh, another mode that it's got is called advanced and it has a whole bunch of, and these are more than just gimmicky features. It actually has some useful stuff. So um, you have uh, within the menu system here, you can go dig around a little bit. Uh, there's these filters and you know, filters are kind of overrated, but uh, they've got a toy camera, which does a little vignette uh, around your image. Um, it does a uh, diorama effect, kind of like the tilt shift uh, images you might be seeing online. Uh, you have uh, some other things that enhance the, the brightness and the saturation, that kind of thing. But what I found really cool was that it has an HDR image uh, system built right in. And again, you can do all this yourself, but uh, kind of nice to have that uh, high, high dynamic range. So if you have a, an outdoor scene on a really bright day, you can uh, try to get a, a better uh, image out of it. So um, it's going to do an HDR image right now of my home studio here. And you got to hold it steady because it needs to get 
uh, two images captured in order to do that. I haven't really played with this mode too much, but um, it's, you know, it's probably about what you would get on a smartphone, but nevertheless, it's kind of a, a cool thing. Um, you can also go into full manual mode, and it's okay. I mean, I, I'm, a, like I said, an amateur photographer, and I like to have a lot more control over my pictures. Um, so you can set, and it's hard to set it quickly like you would do on a, on a more advanced uh, SLR camera, but um, what you can see down here is an image meter, and you can adjust, in this case, we'll adjust our shutter speed to get to a desired point. The problem is it doesn't tell you what the ideal shutter speed is. It just kind of wants you to get this uh, dial in the middle somewhere between those two points. And if you want to set the aperture, which is the opening of the lens, you have to uh, hit the button there and then um, flip it up into that mode. It doesn't have a lot of aperture settings when you're zoomed in. It's a little limited uh, in that regard. So you're not going to you know, do any uh, award-winning photography with this, but you know, if you're getting into photography, this is a kind of a great all-around all camera to be able to do that kind of thing. Now, there's one last thing that I found completely fascinating, uh, amazingly fascinating, which is that it has a high-speed video mode. And I'm sure you may have seen like the Mythbusters where you know, they, they stop a bullet in midair or something like that. So here's a shot of my stove lighting, and this is at 480 frames per second. So that's incredibly fast. And this is kind of within the realm of much more expensive high-speed cameras. This is becoming a feature we're seeing a lot more on consumer-grade cameras. Uh, but 480 frames per second is incredible. Um, and you can see how, what's the kinds of things you might be able to do with it. Now you have some other options for uh, high speed. So you can do a uh, 320 by 240 video. So that's a little bit larger um, frame wise or resolution wise at 240 frames per second. This one might actually be useful, 640 by 480 at 120. And it's not high definition, but this is about what a DVD resolution would be or thereabouts. So it might be useful there. That may be a cool way to show somebody on a skateboard or something uh, where you want to show some more detail in a, in a shot. And what it does is it, it shoots it at that speed and then it'll play back at the standard 30 frames per second. So it's, it's a pretty cool way to represent the, uh, the slow motion without having to do a lot of processing on the image afterwards. So all in all, I have to say, I've been pretty impressed with this thing. I mean, it's not, you know, you're not going to become the next Ansel Adams with it, but at the same time, it, it's a great all around consumer camera with a fantastic zoom. The zoom on this thing is, is really worth the, the price of admission. You can do a lot with it. I, I actually go down to uh, the, the Kennedy Space Center on occasion and, and cover the space program for uh, CTTechJunkie.com. And we're kept pretty far away for obvious reasons from the launches. So the bigger the zoom you have, the better you're going to be. And uh, this thing, the video on it, is good enough that we're going to give it a shot and uh, see what we can uh, take from a distance with it. I think it's really, really useful as a, as a really super zoom uh, HD video camera. So uh, it's impressive. It is good for what it is. I wouldn't, again, expect to take a lot of uh, awesome photos with it, but it will uh, certainly uh, do very well with a family. And, and if for someone that really doesn't want to have to fight with the camera all that much, it's, it's really worth considering. This is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching.